Indeed, all praises are due to Allah alone. We praise Him. We seek His forgiveness. We ask His refuge from potential evil in us and all of our bad deeds. Indeed, to whomsoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide Him. And to whomsoever Allah left astray, there is none to guide Him. <coughs> And I do bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I do bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. To proceed with, indeed the best of the words is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And best of the guidances is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And worst of the matters is to innovate in the matters of religion. And all the innovations in the matters of religion are bid'ah, and all the bid'ahs, and all the bid'ah are misleadings, and all the misleadings are going to end up in hellfire. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Quran in Surah Al-Balad, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Alam najal lahu ainain, walisan wa shafatain." Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us in a way of questioning to ponder upon these ayahs. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, have we not made for them two eyes and a tongue and two lips? And shall not we guide them to two ways? Really, these very short ayahs are, have, are having a lot of meaning in it. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to recall and ponder upon the bounties and blessings which we have showered on us in our own beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us to look at the things by granting us these eyes. And prominently Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the blessing of tongue by which we taste, we speak, we become eloquent and we become effective in the people, we attain the levels what we attain, we decide the directions where we go, we learn the things, we learn the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most prominently Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Al-Eemanu bid'un wa sab'un shu'bah A'alaha qawlu la ilaha illa Allah That Iman has more than 70 branches And the prominent of them is to speak out To say that is with our tongue La ilaha illa Allah How great is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us A small sized tongue the value of it is very well known to is very well known to those who lack it who is deprived of it who are not perfect in using their tongues who has a kind of imperfect speech really brother this tongue is a great weapon and this tongue has a lot to do with us it can lead it can let us to attain the highest ranks and by misusing it we can reach the depth of hellfire. Indeed, the use of the proper and appropriate use of tongue will make you beloved to the people, will make you beloved to Prophet Muhammad as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the, on this, the right use of tongue the best of this world is guaranteed as well as the best of the world hereafter is guaranteed. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us in a way of imtinan, in a way of gratifying the thing that what he has did on to, to us and what he has favored on us. But indeed my dear brother and sister in Islam, if we misuse this tongue, it could be grievous. You know, at once, Prophet ﷺ was inquired by Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu 
about the things which will eligible him to enter into paradise in the heavens or let him lose this world and hereafter prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained him in detail the basics of islam the obligatory and non obligatory things and after giving the detailed list of all those things prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked muad radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu shall not i inquire you shall not i inform you about the ruler of all these things about the controller of all those things muad radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said why not prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said control your tongue you so you see after having the full list of obligatory and non obligatory basics and secondary things in islam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said control your tongue muad radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reinquired prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and requested prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying aw nahnu muakhaduna bi alsinatina aw kama qal are we going to be questioned about the use of our tongue very small thing prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say thakilat ka ummuka ya muad may your mother would found you why he said wa hal tukabbu an-nas fi an-nar ala wujuhihim wa fi riwaya ala manakhirihim illa hasaidu alsinatihim prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that is there anything which is casting down the people on their faces in the hell fire other than the tongue so you see these words which we are speaking as are very important if we misuse it if we don't know how to place it and where to place it it is going to take us and drive us in the hell fire abu hurair radhiyallahu ta'ala an informed that inna ar-rajula la yatakallamu bil kalima la yara biha ba'san yahwi biha 70 kharifan fi an-nar that sometime a person speaks out utters out a word without paying any attention to it and imagining that it has nothing bad in it you see our intellects may be wrong our understand our understanding could be wrong la yara bihi ba'san aw la yara biha ba'san that he imagine that there is no problem in saying this particular word but what will be the result yahwi biha fin sab'ina kharifan fin nar that it will cast him in the hell fire at a distance of 70 light years ya adam billah so you see we have to be very careful while using our tongues and the use of tongue become very much important during the times of trials during the time when there is imp- in a, uh, when there is not a common situation situation or uncommon situation is prevailing you see abu hurair radhiyallahu ta'ala an informed although albani has classified this hadith to be weak in its chain of narrators the meaning stands for and the meaning is still varied abu hurair radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said as reported by abu daud he said satakunu fitnatun samma'u bakma'u amiya man ashraf laha istashrafat lahu wa ishrafun lisani aw israful lisani fiha ka wuqu' as-sayf meaning there will be a civil stri- strife that is fitna which will render people deaf dumb and blind regarding what is right the people will not be able to recognize what is right and wrong it will become very hard to identify the right from the wrong those who contemplate it will be drawn by it so those who those people who go behind it will be caught by this fitna that they will be destroyed and giving rain to tongue during it will be like sim- smiting with the sword that means if we use our tongues without knowing without having the accurate idea of what is right and what is wrong it is very similar to taking out our sword and using it 
using it in for whom in favor of whom it could be in favor of innocents subhanallah you see how grievous sins are these things do you know what happened at the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam how the people the best of this whole world till the day of judgment caught by by fitna yes the best of the people sahaba got got caught by the fitna do you know what was that in surah an nur allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is talaqawnahu bi alsinatikum bi alsinatikum wa taqulunahu bi afwahikum ma laysa lakum bihi ilm wa tahsabunahu hayyinan wa huwa 'inda allah azim you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when you were receiving those things by your tongues and uttering it out by your mouths while imagining imagining it to be negligible hayyin negligible while as a matter of fact in the eyes of allah it was tremendous and grievous what was the matter what was the matter the matter was grievous indeed some of the hypocrites they spread a bad word regarding umm almu'minin aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala an they accused her in her chastity and the word was caught by some of the very simple companions very normal companions who were not who were neither accusing aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha for bad thing nor they were defending aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha they were very neutral in their standpoint but still they were discussing it simply when they discussed this matter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah and said that tahsabunahu hayyana wa huwa 'inda Allah azim you people are imagining imagining it to be the to be uh, negligible and the negligent while it is tremendous and grievous in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what about us if companions some of them fail to identify the right from wrong and got caught by this fitna what about us so my dear brothers and sister in islam we have to hold on our tongue we have to take care of using our tongue yes we have to be very careful while using our tongue because in the abnormal situation when the situation is not 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 normal when the news are being spread negative news are being spread we have to be careful of our own self before any other person we have to take care of our tongues simply by releasing out some hot air we could be in the hell fire so what should we do inshallah we will look into the second part of this khutbah the ayahs which i recited are from surah al mu'minun the very initial ayahs in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning who will be the successful on the day of judgment and on the day of resurrection allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qad aflaha al mu'minun verily those believers will be successful alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un those they remain they remain humble while they pray while they pray and those who remain remain submissive while they pray this is the first quality and the second quality alladhina hum 'ani al-lughwi mu'ridun that those who keep away from ill speech allah we do, does not have any benefit in this world or the hereafter for example if i discuss the things which are related to politics as a common man is it going to benefit me in this world or the hereafter i have to take care of it if i discuss the matters which are in certain far away country is this going to be benefit in this world or the world hereafter so this is the parameter and this is the variable which we need to check before we speak and we utter any word so brothers and sisters sisters in islam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has further explained this basis and given us a great rule regarding this also 
Prophet Sallallahu said as reported by Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an he says Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yaqul khayran aw li yasmut that whosoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hereafter then he shall say a good thing or shall keep quiet so being quiet will not lose anything will not let you lose anything you will not get any harm if you remain quiet especially regarding those things which are not which are not directly related to you and about which you are not going to be inquired by anybody in this world and nor by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world hereafter so being quiet is the best policy and when it requires to speak out try to, try to speak good try to speak positively try to speak constructively try to speak in a best in the best manner possible regardless of whom you are addressing whether it is your wife your kid your children your neighbor your friend or your enemy itself itfa billati hi ahsan so we have to apply this rule in our life moreover in the days of abnormal situation we shall not go behind the things about which we know not wala taqfu ma laysa laka laka ma laysa laka bi ilm inna as-sam'a wal basara wal fuwada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us that we should not go behind those things about which we don't have any knowledge why because we are going to be questioned about all the faculties faculty of hearing faculty of seeing faculty of speaking everything in the sam'a wal basara wal fuad even the what we have comprehended why we have wasted the time in comprehending the things which are not going to benefit in this world and the world hereafter all these things are going to are to be are be the subject of are going to be the subject of question similarly we have to keep away from abusing the tongue ابن مرثود رضي الله تعالى عن سيز ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا اللعان ولا الفاحش ولا البذيء that a mu'min cannot be a person who is accustomed to cursing al-la'an cursing at-ta'an taunting who is going to take out the negative things and the abnormalities in the other people and propagating it no this is this cannot be a perfect mu'min a mu'min cannot be perfect iman cannot be perfect in this type of things moreover bil-la'an wat-ta'an wal al-fahish wal al-badhi he will not come out with the bad words and he will not take say the words which cross the limits he knows his limits al-badhi who cross the limits so you see these are the qualities which we should acquire when we speak out we should not curse we should not say bad words we should not come out with the negative features or the characteristics of others it could be ghiba it could be namima and iyadam billah if because of our poor understanding if because of our limited understanding if something got related to allah or rasul it make it can took us out from the realm of islam itself it's very severe my dear brother and sister that's why as salafus salih the righteous predecessors used to say that al imanu qawlun wa amal that iman is in your words as well as well as in your practice it is not just if you practice good if you pray if you keep fasting it's enough why do you know in a very well established narration prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported that he inquired the companions man al muflis who is the bankrupt so the companions replied say, by saying that al muflisu man la dinara lahu wa la mata the bankrupt among us is one who does not have any money or any property prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna al muflisa inna al muflisa min ummati yawm al qiyamah yaati bi salati wa zakati wa sadaqa bi salati wa siyami wa sadaqa that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the bankrupt person of this ummah of my ummah that is the ummah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will come on the day of resurrection with 
सलाह प्रेयर्स सियाम फास्टिंग सदका जकत एंड वॉलेंट्री सदका वकद वी कद शतम बट ही विल कम इन अ स्टेट दैट ही हैज एब्यूज समबड़ी वकद फहादा एंड एक्यूज समबड़ी सी ग्रीवियस सिंस फ्रॉम वेयर ही डिड दीज थिंग्स फ्रॉम हिज माउथ फ्रॉम हिज माउथ समबड़ी एब्यूज द अदर पर्सन फ्रॉम हिज माउथ सो वॉट विल बी द एंड रिजल्ट द लिस्ट इज देयर सम मोर लिस्ट बट वॉट विल बी द एंड रिजल्ट द एंड रिजल्ट इज दैट fayati fayuti hada min hasanati wa daka min hasanati the person who got cursed take from the good deeds of the good doer who had a big record of sala siyam zaka that will be taken away and recorded in the records of the person who got cursed or abused and the person who got accused all those persons will take away all the good deeds from this person and what is the end result the ultimate end result for you the fufinar the person who did all these good deed things good deeds will be thrown into the hell fire unless and until he get cleared of these sins you see what is the result after doing after fasting the whole month of ramadan after fasting the shawal after observing the prayers on time after sacrificing our love in the in the wealth what is the result if we do not control our tongue and that too especially in the times of abnormality so dear brothers and sisters in islam my simple message is that the least thing which we can consider due to the abuse of this tongue at the day of judgment is that as recorded by abu darda radhiyallahu ta'ala an or as narrate, uh, narrated by abu darda radhiyallahu ta'ala an and recorded by muslim he says qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna al-la'anina la yakunu shufa'a wa la shuhada yawm al-qiyamah that those who are accustomed to abuse and cursing will not be the witness or the intercessors on the day of judgment Yes we may repent before we die from all this cursing and all these things but the least torment or least punishment which we can expect is that we will not be granted the degree of intercessors or witnesses so very briefly allah subhanahu wa taala says wa qul li ibadi yaqul allati hiya ahsan inna ash-shaytana yanzu baynakum baynahum inna shaytana kana lil insani aduwwa mubina meaning and tell my servants to say that which is best indeed satan induces among them indeed satan is ever to mankind a clear enemy so we have to try to say best